Good morning. I hope you are all well. I'm doing fine. All is well. But the world is not well. And the spirit of uh, humanity is not well. Far from well. And if you were to look closely, it's incredibly sick what's going on in the world. Why this concerns me and why I feel I need to verbalise <clears throat> and talk about observations that I, I see day in, day out is because, like many of you, I have children that are going to be um, bearing the brunt of decisions and um, mistakes made by influential people and schools and teachers and politicians and <laughs> single mums and enemies of God. All these bad, bad, bad people who hate good. They love despair. They love um, the next new thing to be a victim of. They love the, the worldly world, the material world. The material things matter to them opposed to um, having peace and contentment and uh, tolerance. It's not too long ago, right? we're still in the, the midst of things just now and people seem to have forgotten that for almost two years we've not been allowed legally and without the threat of uh, violence to live as we please in a peaceful manner. And now because something else has come along, something that most people and I include myself and most people, don't know all the ins and outs of, namely speaking of the, the conflict going on in Ukraine at the moment. Now, the same typical people who were supporting lockdown and supporting vaccination mandates and masks and all the the nonsense, because that's all it was. It was absolute, utter, over-intellectualised, fear-mongering nonsense. All these people that supported that, without even uh, using their own mind, God-given mind, because their mind was given by God. The last thing in your parents' mind when you were being conceived was making a mind for you let alone eyes and ears and uh, all the, the other good stuff that come along with being part of a uh, human society. The last thing your parents were thinking of was giving you a mind. That was given to you from something else, something bigger than humanity and probably something incomprehensible to most people. Now these same people, these people that were happy to suppress their, their fellow human brothers and sisters for two years, first opportunity they get to express their support for something they don't know, namely the conflict in Ukraine, that's going to see the, the end of lives prematurely, people seeing things that the human eye should not see, people being blown to pieces and turned into puddles of blood and bone in front of their families, people being misplaced, people having to leave the, the sanctuary of their home when the home should be a sanctuary, a place of peace. And people support us in the West sending a weaponry to uh, the Ukrainians. And what they're doing is they're Yes, they're sending weaponry, but they're, they're saying, I support you killing your fellow man in order to achieve a goal that's really no good for anyone. And on the political stage, the same people that were pushing all the lockdown crap and all the jab crap, these are the same people that want the world to be in chaos. And why do they want this? It's a psychological thing. If you feel inferior to these people and that you can't make decisions for yourself and your family about your sovereignty and about your uh, your wishes, how to navigate through life, if you don't feel that you are um, strong enough 
you will rely on these propagandists, if that's even a word, to make these decisions for you. And how did we get to that point? And I've had a, a few conversations recently with guys and uh, a few women that are very um, observant of what's going on in the greater world and in uh, the psychology of society, that we give a responsibility for everything away. An example of this would be educating our children. We give that away to schools, colleges and universities, places that are not um, <laughs> full of people with wisdom and uh, questioning minds. These are um, press enter people. They regurgitate someone else's belief without even the slightest input of their own mind. We hand over the responsibility of education. We hand over the responsibility of uh, self-preservation. We trust governments to, to look after us and keep us safe. When the last thing in the world the government cares about is looking after you and keeping you safe, perhaps to um, milk you of your labour, because it's certainly not about money. These people uh, can create vast amounts of wealth at the touch of a button. Money is not the issue, but the labour is the issue for the time being anyway, until <laughs> you have uh, lorries that can drive themselves and uh, drones that can drop off your uh, groceries and things that no long, longer need a human being to uh, be part of the labour force. The technology will uh, replace that at some point. Evidently, technology tends to move a lot faster than the, the human mind or the human understanding of things evolves. And we pass away so much of a responsibility, even to the point of thought. And most of you, if you're watching on YouTube, you've probably got a good grasp of... Uh, what's put forward in social media and things. You see advertisements and whatnot for Google. At just ask Google. Don't think for yourself. Ask Google how you should think and feel about situations. And uh, It's that step to moving towards a human that is, is a genetic robot. You input information and instructions and these people carry it out without question? Or is it that people are so desperate to be worldly people, to be seen as uh, popular and pretty and materially wealthy and to have certain status, that these things mean more important or they have more importance to them than being a moral people or a moral person? with three free thought, drawn their own conclusions, deductive reasoning, and uh, observing things without prejudice, and that prejudice coming from uh, the media and friends and family that influence them. I think at the moment, this, the humanity is in a, in a terrible state of affairs but that doesn't leave us without hope there are um, people out there individual people that are examples of how to be people with peace people that are not angry for every everything that goes on in the world that they disagree upon they see it for what it is they observe it they be patient and tolerant of what's going on but if I use the gauge of mental insanity in the world and I use Facebook for this, you can see all these people, I stand with Ukraine, I, I, I hate Vladimir Putin, Russia is bad. Again, why do they hate Vladimir Putin? Same way they hated Donald Trump. He's a godly man, vocally positive on his faith. He's a believer in uh, men leading the way. And whether he's right or wrong, <clears throat> which is always up for debate, he is doing what he feels to be best. 
and the people with axes to grind, the people within society, the, the people that are <laughs> single parents or sluts, and I know some of these words aren't used very frequently in common language anymore because language has been diluted so much. If you've ever taken the time to read something that was from the 1800s, early 19, 1900s, the vocabulary in the writing was incredible. And it gave you a real essence of uh, what the storyteller or author was trying to describe very directly, very precisely with words. Now you speak to um, not even children, adults, and they can't y even go five minutes without terms like, well, you fucking know this, and oh, you, you can, and I don't can, I don't fucking know. Why don't you try and describe your point of view? And the truth is, these people probably don't have a point of view and they don't have the capacity to, if they did, verbalise what they were saying. I think the solution to this is um, if you want to be a positive influence or impact in the world, you must lead by example. And that being an example of peace, an example of tolerance, an example of hope and uh, goodwill to all men, not just the ones that are in your football team or the same colour of skin as you or the same religious faith as you or whatever. It needs to be for all people. That's how we get out of this. So we need more examples. And we need to be out there. I had a chat with a, a young man the other day and he, he's got a good um, <laughs> brain between his ears. But he can be overcome with some of the thoughts. And things will come out that contradict what he said before. And that's okay. But he's very um, enclosed in his world. And a few guys I know are like this, they have the, the right train of thought and they're good examples of someone aspiring to be a righteous person or a, perhaps not a godly person or a Christian or whatever, but they're trying to be good people. But they're shut off from the world. They feel that with the, the restrictions over the last two years that society doesn't want to be involved with them. Like in my case, I know that uh, Six months ago, if I tried to go into a restaurant, there would have been some friction there because someone would have said, where's your mask? Can I see your passport? All this crap that I don't buy into, I don't do that. So I know that part of society wouldn't have welcomed me because they weren't tolerant people. They, they, were, they were judgmental people. They were programmed people and they were fearful people. So it's hard in a sense to, at the moment, and it's getting easier with the restrictions easing. We, we can become more uh, social again and integrate back into society or even via social media. You can build wee communities of people that can um, share their, their views and opinions and, and um, keep that cycle of thought going where we're thinking and we're reasoning and we're being reasonable people, even on a social media group that there is a benefit in that when you can't interact in the real world. So my my advice, take it if you want or don't, I particularly don't care because I have peace, but I would like to see other people have peace as well. I don't like to see people in fear of a global pandemic that's going to kill us all or a world that could a war that could go nuclear that's going to kill us all or food shortages that's going to starve half the world all this stuff that is all put there to put fear into your heart so you depend on someone who you believe whether it's true or not well it's not true the politicians are equal to you they're flesh and blood they piss and shit they think they have families generally but they simply have a different train of thought and a lot of them think for themselves they're about worldly things they want status material the ego fed they want to have the newest car hundreds of money in the bank and things like that they want to be materially rich rather than spiritually rich and i often say to people somewhat jokingly that i am the richest man that you know 
And that doesn't mean materially rich. I am rich in peace and understanding. I value people that are in my life. I value my family. I value conversations. I have I value, I, I value um, not so much conflict, but someone having a reasonable discussion, a reasonable debate. It, it fills me with joy because it can perhaps put me on a better path of understanding, which leads me to be a better example to my children and to my friends and my clients and the society that I, that I mix with. So there isn't... Um, darkness at the end of the tunnel there's always light at the end of the tunnel but for that uh, light to become brighter you must put yourself out there and don't be afraid to speak if you have understanding and knowledge and things that other people don't and question when someone says something that you can see there's naivety in it or foolishness in it not to belittle that person or not to make them feel foolish like you shouldn't be wearing a mask. Are you a fucking idiot? What That's going to repel people. Or your Ukraine flag. An example of this, I took my, my son and his friend to Airsoft at the weekend and all these guys, all these macho men with toy guns and camouflage are running about with Ukraine patches, Ukraine flags everywhere. Political virtue signalling on an airsoft field by beta males <laughs> and I know I'm there but I'm taking them I'm taking my children there that is a uh, recreation and fun not a lifestyle and it's for my children <clears throat> but you've got all these people with wrong ideas lost absolutely lost souls and when the next th thing comes along they'll be in the same boat I want to be an example to these people that you don't need to be um, jumping on the first political bandwagon. You don't need to be virtue signaling 24 hours a day. It's it's ridiculous. If you're if you are angry with government, if you're angry with Putin, if you're angry with the uh, non-vaxxers and non-maskies, and if you're angry with the uh, the guy that pumped you and dumped you, the guy that gave you the sense that you are owed something to live in a victim mentality is solely your choice if your world is bad it's not because um, someone who wronged you in the past it's your attitude towards things the lessons weren't learned you didn't overcome an opportunity that could have made you a stronger more spiritual, more thankful, appreciative person than you are just now. Because no one wants to be a no-hoper. No one is a child and thinks, you know what, when I grow up I want to moan about how tired I am and how little money I have and how I wish I could get a break from my life and desperate for your two weeks in Spain every year to escape from a life that you hate. No child wants that. Children want peace and they want fun. And when you speak to a child about something that is... Uh, get some depth to it they are drawn to that they, they are curious children are curious they still have that lust for life that adults seem to have lost and I always try or when the, the time is appropriate and I get the opportunity to engage in a, a reasonably in-depth conversation about things with children to show them that not all adults are there to ignore them and to appease them with sweets and toys and cl expensive clothing and trips away from the horrible life that their family has set up. I like to engage in the, the moral and spiritual conversations with these children to give them a, a taste for it and a hunger for it. And that, um, that a mature guy, a guy with greys in his beard and things, can look at that small boy or small girl and see them as a fellow human being, someone that should be nurtured in the right way and not the wrong way, in which 90% of the case I see with my own eyes. It's not speculation. I see children being raised in the wrong way, but I'm grateful and appreciative that I'm also in the mix and I see children being raised in the right way. So the message today is hope, be an example, be courageous enough to express your views whether it be in person in public, whether it be on social media for all the haters 
all the, the bitter beta males, the sluts, the, 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 the people that are enemies of God, the people that do all things that are anti-humanity, they hate you, they want you to be quiet. I will never be quiet. The reason for this is I have zero fear of anything or anybody or losing anything or anyone. So therefore I'm a free man. I can speak freely. I can have peace and observe the world that's going on. If I can see it, I can adapt for it and prepare for things if I, I feel that I need to for in the future. I'm trying to be an example for my children in the best possible way that I can without leaving my kids behind and appeasing them with material things and uh, temporary fixes and temporary dopamine rushes. I want my kids to be raised with uh, love and that is tolerance, understanding, patience nurture, care, honesty. People say they don't have time for these things. I say these people are liars and they're more self-involved with themselves and how they're a victim of the world and they want to manipulate you and I to give them a break. They misbehave or they, they espouse the wrong opinions or they act immorally. Whilst they do these things, they say that they're a victim of something. That's so you give them a break. No breaks. Hard ball. We need it just now. Because in a number of years, short years, these children that have been broken by their parent allowing them to be afraid of viruses and wars at the other side of the world or conflict at the other side of the world. These broken children, these children that are being encouraged to uh, engage in inappropriate behaviour and inappropriate conversations at young age, these are going to be the decision makers of the future. What sort of decisions they are going to make depends on how we raise these children. And we will be old people when they are at the helm. And is it going to be a reasonable experience where we can continue to have peace? Or are we going to be looking with utter dread and utter disgust for our children, their families, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren? It's interesting, but uh, I just thought I'd uh, get up this morning and put something out into the ether. And there'll be the critics, and there'll be the haters, and there'll be the people that appreciate it. So I thank you guys. And when I make these videos, <coughs> I'll, I make them so I can watch them back, so I can observe myself and come to some sort of understanding why I think this way, or have I said something that's maybe I need to look at more? It's all about making a better you, which is a, an example to the kids and to other people who need better examples because the world isn't full of them at the moment. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. That's been quite a long one today. I'm going to dry my hair before I, I turn into a frizz ball. But I wish you all the best. God bless. And I'll see you later.